Today's tutorial is going to be about making this sweet pea branches and this is the easiest and simplest method you won't need anything except wafer paper, a bowl tool and my acetonic conditioner which is a free recipe to download. So let's begin! And I'm going to cut my shapes. Today I'm using 027 millimeters wafer paper but anything from 0.22 to 0.35 would work for this application. So these are my three parts to make a sweet pea. And to make a flower, I'm going to use 24 gauge wire. And I'm going to cut it in thirds. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to prepare my wires and my centers. I'm going to make a hook. about this size and to make my base I'm going to use white floral tape and I'm going to use full length but I would need just a small piece to have my center a little bit thicker so I'm stretching my floral tape and building this center for my first layer I'm bringing this down something like this and for my flower, I'm going to show you how to shape them. And for that, I'm going to use my floral pot, just a basic bowl tool. You can use metal, you can use plastic. I didn't need a lot of this conditioner, so I'm going to place just a small amount on my table. And I will take small amount of moisture with my brush first and apply on the shiny side of my wafer paper. Here you can see this is my bumpy side and this is the shiny side. So if you work with wafer paper you probably know the difference and you can clearly see it on your wafer paper if your wafer paper is single thickness. So I'm going to apply this on the shiny side, small amount of moisture to make it sticky and I'm going to bring my floral pot place my center here in between and sandwich this like I'm making a pierogi or something but because I have just enough liquid I can sandwich my center here inside my wafer paper and I'm going to use my ball tool a small side of my ball tool and gently run it around to shape and give it a little bit more movement and not have just flat wafer paper so you can see it's almost like an S curve shape and I'm going to set it aside to dry and the same way I'm going to shape my middle pebble so again i have small amount of my conditioner here i'm taking it with a brush and applying onto my smooth side of wafer paper making sure that i have enough moisture so i will be able to shape it and i'm going to place it on my foam part if your wafer paper is melting while you're doing this application of a conditioner have a little bit of cornstarch with a fluffy brush on hand and just gently apply a small amount of cornstarch onto your wafer paper to prevent it from sticking. And I'm going to use same ball tool and just shape it here on the outside like this. I'm working on the shiny side. And here at the bottom so I can have a shape for my sweet pea. I'm going to set it aside to dry on my bumpy foam with my center and I'll do the same treatment for my larger petal. Small amount of wafer paper conditioner on a shiny side. Making sure that I have enough moisture so it's not going to break. And I want this flower to be a little bit more open so I'm going to take cornstarch, apply it on the shiny side and then turn it upside down. So I have my bumpy side up here and I'm going to take a large size ball tool and run it around to shape my petal this way. So this is going to be my largest petal for my sweet pea and I'm going to set it aside to dry right here as well. And now I have 
all my parts for my flower what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my wafer paper glue and again if you're going to download this template it will include my conditioner recipe and my wafer paper glue recipe i'm going to take a small amount of my wafer paper glue and apply it here in the middle for my second petal and i'm going to place it on top like this so i can bring it down and shape my flower around my center so these are the first two layers of my flower and i'm making sure that i have enough connection here on the back so it's not going to become undone and for my large petal i'm going to apply small amount of wafer paper glue here on this side and i'm going to place it here to the back as well pinch everything together so now i have a shape for my wafer paper sweet pea and like you can see here on my branch some of my back petals are going in like this and some of them are going outwards so it depends on how you wanted to shape them you wanted to make them more open and a little bit more close it's up to you but it gives the difference in dimension to your arrangement so i'm going to do to leave it this way and now what i need to do is to dust this you can leave it white but i wanted to add more color by using petal dusts and for my petal dust, I'm going to use a touch of the Cecilia Rose. Fern is my green. And for my accent blue color, I'm going to use this Forget Me Not. First, I'll start with my green color because I wanted this to be my accent color here in the middle. And I'm going to take a roughly dense brush to dust my V fur paper. And I'm going to dust this in between my layers, applying just a small amount of green color here. And a little bit between these petals too, on both sides and on the back. Now I wanted to use a touch of this Cecilia Rose to be as a blush color on one side of my sweet pea. Just a little touch and maybe here on this side because if i'm going to use one color for example just blue or just pink it's not going to look as dimensional as i want it to and for my blue accents i'm going to use this forget me not color and what i wanted to do is i wanted to dust only outer edges of my sweet pea especially here on my back petal or my largest petal i wanted to create visual separation between my layers and here on the back and i'm not covering the whole flower in the same color i'm adding accents like color accents you can see right here so from the side my flower is going to look interesting from the front right here you can see that i have three colors i have pink i have green and i have blue so when i'm going to assemble everything together it's not going to look flat and now i need to add calyx and assemble everything together and now for my calyx i'm going to use this pre-colored wafer paper and a five petal craft punch because i find it's easier to do it this way you have a template so you can cut a template but i have this wafer paper it's airbrushed with forest green color and i'm going to use my acetonic to shape my calyx same as we did for our petals a small amount of wafer paper conditioner acetonic on the back side of my calyx so one side is green and the other side is white just easier for me to shape it and i'm using a thick end of my dresden tool to make my calyx parts a little bit pointy and more visually interesting i'm applying a small amount of my wafer paper glue i'm going to insert this through my wire you can see right here this is going to through the middle and then i'm going to pinch my calyx onto my flower 
like this and it gives me just enough green color here at the start of my flower to make it look more realistic. Now I have all my flowers and ready to assemble. And now to assemble all my flowers, I need to tape my stems because I want them to be light green. And I'm going to make those swirly pieces. To do that, I'm going to use 30 gauge floral wire. You can use white, you can use green, whatever you have on hand. And I'll take half with light green floral tape. To make those parts of uh, sweet pea, I'm going to tape my 30 gauge wire with this light green floral tape. And when I have it full width, I'm going to cut it roughly in thirds. And now is my favorite part to shape them. You can use a thin end of your brush or a pencil. Just uh, hold it to your pencil or to your brush and twist it to create those swirly shapes. And I'm going to use the same floral tape, light green, to cover my stems because I've used uh, white wires and I wanted to, everything to be even color. So I'm basically pinching my floral tape to my stem and bringing this down. I would need to do this to all my flowers to have an even coverage and even color. And it makes assembling even easier because floral tape is sticky and it sticks to itself. Now that I have my flowers, I'm going to use 22 gauge wire as the base for my flower. And I'm using again the same half with floral tape. This is light green. And I'm starting at the top, making sure that my floral tape is stuck to my wire. And then I'll take one of these swirly things, tape it down, take one of my smallest flowers. And then taping it down, alternating these swirly pieces and my flowers to make sure I like the shape and I like the placement and it's going to be a great addition to my floral arrangement. And now you have it, my last piece. I'm going to tape all my wires down. So I have my light green stem and all my paper, paper flowers and different things so I can create a movement and a shape of this sweet pea branch. And don't be afraid to bend your wire and shape it and move it the way you want it to look like because sometimes it's not so obvious uh, why our flowers are not gorgeous most of the time because they are too flat either in color or in your shape and because we have a wire here you can reshape it and you can put it the way you, your flower arrangement is moving to create a visual interest. 